Hello peeps, welcome to the Jacob Mojo Pillar channel. Uh just make sure you subscribe and share and uh yeah. Just here to do another video. I haven't done one for a while. It's good to be uh, back doing one. I just want to touch on the grace to overcome sin. You know what we're dealing and dealing with a lot of things in life, especially like particular sins. Sometimes we don't understand God's grace for yeah, for us is there to overcome sin. You know what? And His grace is bigger than your addiction, especially if it's certain repetitive sins. Okay, His grace is bigger than my addiction. Okay, He's a big God. Your sins are not bigger than Him. That's one thing we need to remember. But I want to touch on a few things that will help us overcome and help us uh, just deal with sins that we commit and how we can overcome and walk away from them and walk free from them. Okay. Now, first of all, it's important to understand we're free in Christ. But first of all, it's important to understand that we are forgiven. We are forgiven. Okay. The Bible talks about how uh, the communion we, we drink of the blood of Jesus in terms of the wine, the red drink to represent the blood, and it, it it's talking about we drink for the remission of sins. So our sins are taken away once and for all. Hebrews talks uh, talks about. Uh, this is the Son of God who taketh away the sin of the world. John chapter 1. He takes away our sins. He took it away. He forgives us and He taketh away the sin. And the cross and the resurrection was uh, the, the, the completion of that. Alright. So I just want to touch on a few scriptures that will help us overcome sin. Alright. Hebrews chapter 4. Um, verse 14 to 16. I'm just going to read it out. So bear with me. While I look um, that way to read the scriptures. Um, seeing that we have a high priest <clears throat> that has passed into the heavens. Jesus the Son of God let us hold fast to our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with feeling of our infirmities. But was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to, ha to help in a time of need. Okay. That was the King James Version. Okay. Let's start. Let's just go back and see uh, verse 14. And seeing that we have a great high priest. What does the high priest do? In Leviticus, the high priest presents a sacrifice. Presents an offering uh, to, 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 um, to God. Of, for the people of Israel so that their sins may be forgiven or God can look, overlook their sins or not look at their sins or not judge them with their wrath with his wrath okay the same thing Jesus Christ when he was at the cross he laid his life down to become a sacrifice and not just that he actually went into heaven and went and presented himself as a sacrifice as a high priest yeah, so as a high priest presenting a sacrifice, what was the sacrifice? He himself, his blood, his blood, which is shed for the remission of sins. So through his blood we are forgiven. The wrath of God with, you know, Romans talks about, we've escaped the wrath of God because of faith. Okay, uh, Jesus, uh, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. So knowing that Jesus is my high priest, we should have confidence and hold fast to our profession. What is a profession? Amplified uses the word confession. Instead of profession. So really, our profession is our confession. You've got to hold fast to your faith. Amplify it. Let us hold fast to our confession of faith in Him. So one of the things you've got to realize when you're dealing with sin. He's your high priest. He stood in the middle for you, between you and God. He's presented Himself. And uh, he, he should be your confession. He is your intercessor. He's interceded for you. He's there for you. He's presented Himself as a sacrifice. Uh, for the sins that you've committed, past, present, and future. You didn't just do it for past sins when you got saved, for but for all sins. And Hebrews 10 talks about once and for all. And when he died on the cross and rose again, that was before you were born. So he already had paid for that 2,000 and uh, how, so however many hundred years ago. 2,000 and uh, hundreds of years ago. Okay? Because it's more than 2,000 years now since he did what he did on the cross and rose again. So, let us hold fast to our profession. Let us hold fast to our confession. So, I've got to hold fast to Hold on to Jesus Christ. When I'm dealing with my sins, hold on to Him. He is the High Priest. Hold on. 
by how by confessing you are lord god you confessing jesus christ just hold on to our confession confessing the fact that we are righteous in him confessing that he is god confessing that he is jesus christ not running away because we have sinned but recognizing him even in that time when we were committed sin let's hold fast to our profession verse 16 for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with feelings of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin in other words this is not a person who was never tempted who never faced challenges like we did he didn't yet he was without sin he didn't commit sin see where we fell he got right not in a self-righteous like, look you know, I'm better than you know yeah obviously we know he's better than us in that sense but he will got it right to help us where we got it wrong. So he doesn't rub our nose in it. Yeah, in the muck we find ourselves. He got it right. Where we failed, he passed. Where we lost, he won. Why? For us. But yet he faced temptation. Tempted by, tempted by stealing. Tempted by sexual immorality. Tempted by all sorts of things. But yet he did not sin. He was strong for us. He conquered for us. And then once he conquered, he gives us the victory. Yeah? And then say, you be more than conquerors. So, you have conquered through Jesus Christ. It's not what you did, it's what he did. And he says, here's the victory I won for you at the cross and the resurrection. And it says there in verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. So this is clearly talking about sin, especially when we read verse 15 and says, He was tempted. You know, we are tempted. And it's by saying, Now, look, Jesus Christ was a high priest. Let us hold on to our confession in to our faith in him, which we do through confession because we believe we speak. Second Corinthians chapter four, I think verse thirteen. Yeah? For we have not a high priest cannot be touched. Let's come therefore boldly to the throne of grace. So you, because you have a high, a high priest who is presenting himself for you and me, I can come boldly to the throne of grace. What is boldly? Boldly speaks of faith. Faith gives us access to grace. Romans 5, 2 I think. So therefore, we can approach the throne of grace. Not It is not the throne of God's anger. It's not even the throne of God's wrath. It's the throne of grace. It, he specifically named his throne the grace throne. So we can approach boldly by, by faith. Not based on what we've done but what he did. That we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in a time of need. We may obtain mercy and find help in a time of need. So we're not running away when we've committed sin. No. We are approaching the throne of grace. How? By faith. I believe, I'm confessing, I'm trusting that Jesus Christ, you're right there to help me, to help me overcome this sin, this crap that I've got myself into, this trouble that I've got myself into. You're right there, Jesus. You ain't running away from me. I have come to your, I'll come to your throne. Father, I'll come to your throne. I thank you for your help. You're not running away. Adam and Eve were trying to run and hide. God's like, why are you hiding from me? When we come in sin, we hide. We stop praying, stop talking to God. We want to separate ourselves from God. But then God separated himself for us. No, he's looking for you. Where are you, Adam? Why are you hiding? Because he was there to help Adam and Eve when they messed up in the garden. God is there to help you when you've messed up. Let us approach great throne of grace and find grace to help. Grace to help. Grace to help us get over this sin. Because there is a favor for you to overcome a particular sin. There is God's grace. There is no addiction. Whether it be drug addiction, porn addiction, whatever addiction, whoever addiction. Yeah, there is no addiction that's bigger than God's grace. Let's remember that. Now there's a scripture in Titus, and I'll be quick uh, here. Uh, it says here in Titus 2.11. For, for the grace of God has that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. So the grace of God has appeared to us, to all men, yeah, and it is 
teaching us. What does teaching speak for? It speaks of being educated. What do we say about education? Yeah, we talk about education and empowerment. The grace of God empowers us, empowers us, yeah, to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, to deny unworldly lust. So that we may should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. It's getting engraced in a God, in God's grace. Getting, sorry, um, immersed in God's grace. I don't know what I'll just say there. Immersed in God's grace that helps us overcome sin. No running away. Just looking at God's love. God's righteousness for us. God's favor over us. God's strength for us to overcome sin. No running away, but recognize His grace is there. To help us, to teach us, to mold us, to shape us, to educate us. How? How do you access that grace? By having faith. Still reading your Bible. Don't stop reading your Bible because you've sinned. Don't stop praying because you've sinned. Do have faith. Read by faith. Pray by faith. See, some of us, we just pray. No faith. We just read. No faith. You've got to believe and confess. This is me. I am a victor over this sin because of Jesus Christ. Why can we have confidence and approach the throne of grace uh, boldly? It is because he is the high priest. He is there arguing for us. He is not even arguing. He is there. He's presented the sacrifice already. And God has accepted the sacrifice and you're forgiven. So now I can boldly approach knowing God has forgiven me. So I can boldly approach the throne of grace. And find his favor for me. To overcome sin. And that grace would teach me, educate me, empower me to overcome sin. Just a little video. Uh, thank you for watching. Look out for the next video. Make sure you subscribe, share and like. Thank you.